Discussions around inclusion have moved way beyond just gender, but how inclusive is the advertising we see? Both Kantar and the Gina Davis Institute have been tracking inclusion in thousands of adverts around the world. We looked at 2,000 some odd ads over about a 12 year period, and we were just astonished. And the results from the first study was that men appeared four times more, they spoke seven times more, uh, female characters were in the kitchen, they were cooking, men were outdoors driving around, uh, you know, no people really, no people of color, no, no LGBTQ+, disabilities, etc. It was just, we were gobsmacked. If you ask people uh, whether uh, men and women should be paid the same for doing the same work, um, half of people in India and about a quarter of people in Japan will tell you that a man should be paid more uh, than a woman for doing exactly the same work. 10% um, of Colombians think that it's wrong for a woman to earn more than her husband, whereas 30% uh, of people in the UAE think the same thing. So obviously, if you're worried about men and women having equal opportunities in the workplace and really leveraging women's economic contribution, giving them those opportunities, that's the kind of thing you really need to tackle. Aside from the statistic, you know, of, you know, 38 um, percent of the ads had people of color um, and it did improve from 2006. But when you look at, you know, what are the characters doing? Where are they being placed? It's, you know, Caucasian characters, white characters are more often shown um, as working. They're more often shown as being, you know, smart. Um, you know, this gets down to the messaging and the copy and the words and the language. Uh, so, um, so there's huge disparities there. More inclusive approaches to advertising in terms of who's in the ads, uh, what they're doing, the perspective of the, of the, of the protagonist in the ads and so on, uh, those have big impacts on, on who buys what. So it's a business imperative too. We found that you know, just over 70% of, of men and women you know, said they didn't see themselves represented in, in ads. Well, hold on, you know, if you're going to engage people, then you know, show people like me. Um, and so we started doing that and we found that the uh, more progressive ads had 25% more impact um, and indeed had 25% more uh, purchase uh, interest, which of course is what advertising uh, is trying to achieve. So uh, the, the business case is very clear. You know, if you create ads that uh, engage people more by, by showing more representative um, samples of life, um, you will get more effective advertising. At a top line level, I don't think there's an issue with racial representation in advertising. So if we think about people from a different ethnic backgrounds, they're represented in about a quarter of ads globally. Um, if we think of people from diff different ethnic minorities, they're in about a fifth of ads globally, though we do see differences from country to country. Race is, it depends on where you are, right? So when you look at people of color in the UK being 18%, and then, you know, you look at a place like, you know, South Africa, where it's 91%, and the US is 38%, you know, in advertising, it's about 43%. So it's hard to say, well, is that good or is that bad? It depends on where you are. In Kenya, well, it's probably not more about white and black people, but in Kenya, we have about 42 different tribes, right? So you'll find in African countries or even in African politics, it's more about the tribe that you come from, right? Rather the color of skin you are. So for us, we have to be very sensitive and conscious to are we representing the face of Kenya in all our communications? The countries that are doing well are typically countries that have got histories of immigration. Um, so if you think about uh, North America, you think about Western Europe, and um, we also see high levels of representation in Brazil, which has got you know, a really diverse um, societal makeup. We've got a lot better at representation in the actual ads over the last year or two or last few years. Um, and there's all sorts of partners and people that you can work with to help make sure uh, that, 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 that you hold yourself accountable to that. Um, and in a way, that's quicker. It's not necessarily easy, but it's quicker to be able to um, adjust casting than it is to be able to fundamentally change the way that you go out and f make yourselves attractive to people that you want to recruit. That's by definition going to take longer. Typically, we see an uplift in advertising performance if you um, have better representation. 
the, the one country that sticks out is France. Um, and there you get lower advertising performance scores when you've got better racial representation. Um, and I think what's happening there is that, you know, France has a long history of um, immigration, um, but it also has a long history of um, racial problems, uh, racial tensions, and, you know, has a strong far right. Uh, so I think that's probably what's being reflected in our data. Advertising is comprised of some of the oldest and greatest storytelling. When you think about storytelling, advertising is telling stories. And when you think about women and girls being 51% you know, of the population, uh, to ignore that, which they have been you know, ignored. And when you think about women are 85% of all consumer product purchases, there's a big you know, disparity there. Where there's maybe room for improvement, it's in terms of the portrayal of disabled and LGBT people. Uh, we're not necessarily seeing as much as that um, as would represent society as it actually is. There's just a lot of work uh, that needs, needs to be done. We do see progress, but we're nowhere near at parity in any of these dimensions that we study.